In this video, I'm going to show you how I built a bathroom vanity from start to finish. This includes building the cabinet base as well as an oak vanity top designed for a vessel style sink. Alright, let's get into the video. I made all of this vanity out of a sheet of 3 quarter inch sanded maple plywood. So my first step was to cut my sheet of plywood down into the size pieces that I would need to build my carcass. Now I like to cut them a little bit bigger than I need with my circular saw first and then I get them to their final dimension over on the table saw. Once I had my pieces cut to size, I drilled some pocket holes in each of my support pieces. Now I'll be joining the pieces for the vanity together using a combination of wood glue and pocket hole screws. Once all my pocket holes were drilled, I then went ahead and notched out a section on the bottom of my main vertical pieces for my toe kick. I'm not 100% sure if there's a standard size toe kick, but for this bathroom vanity, I decided to cut my toe kick about 4 inches high and 3 inches deep. And this vanity will also be needing some sort of back. Now, for most of the cabinets that I make, I use some quarter inch plywood for this. The plywood just sort of floats in a groove that I route out. Now, to route out this groove, I just set up a quarter inch straight bit on my router table and I ran all of my pieces through that needed that groove. It's important to make sure of things like orientation and which side needs the groove, etc. So I like to take a little extra time after I cut down all of my pieces to size and label all of those pieces to help keep things straight during the next few steps. Then it was time to get this thing assembled. Now basically all I was doing was making one box, then making another box, and then connecting box A to box B. Super complicated stuff, huh? But I know, I make it look easy. That was just a joke, but in all seriousness, I think it's using these right angle clamping squares that make my assemblies go a lot smoother. Using these help me make sure that I'm keeping this vanity cabinet square, which is going to be very important when it comes time to installing drawers. Using some wood glue and pocket hole screws, I had this vanity assembled fairly quickly. Alright, so I got the carcass of my vanity done. Now what I need to do is I've got some 1x2 poplar boards and I'm going to add a face frame all around this here. So let me go ahead and just uh, take care of that. Yep, yep, that looks much better. Okay, so as you can see I've got three drawers on this side, three drawers on this side, and the middle is going to be two cabinet doors. Um, it's going to allow you to be able to access all of the drains and stuff like that, so. The next thing I had to do was cut down some sheets of that quarter inch plywood to fit into the grooves that I routed out earlier for the backs of my vanity. All right, I cut some quarter inch uh, panels that I'm gonna slide into the backs of my cabinet there to get that closed up. So my next step is just to go ahead and insert those panels onto each side. Right now I'm gonna leave the middle one open just so that when I put this vanity in, I'll have easier access to hooking up the drain pipes and stuff like that. And then I'll add that middle back panel a little bit later. But for now, let's get those two side panels attached. All right guys, I got the carcass of my vanity pretty much together here. And 
I gotta say it actually does look like a bathroom vanity which is a good thing because that's what I wanted it to look like. So anyways my next step is I need to add the drawer slides to each of these openings that are going to be for my drawers which are the three openings on each of my sides. And the drawer slides that I decided to use are these undermount uh, drawer slides here. And now these drawer slides do take you know a little bit more figuring out um, in terms of getting your box exactly right and there's maybe a few extra steps than other drawer slides I've used in the past. But I've installed a lot of drawer slides um, so far and what I've noticed is that these undermount ones seem to function the best out of all of them. So yes, they are going to cost a little bit more money. They might have a few extra steps to figure out, but I think in the long run you, you get what you pay for. Um, these in my opinion just seem to function the best. And then sort of once you figure out the system of how to install these, then really they're not too difficult. Um, and, and really it becomes a lot easier uh, for, for repeating the process. So uh, next step is to go ahead and try to get these drawer slides in, attached into my uh, openings here on these sides. So it's time to do that. Now rather than fight gravity on this one, I decided to flip the vanity up on its side and install my slides that way. Now I made sure to make my face frame for this vanity so that it would line up flush with the sides of the cabinet. That way I could just attach these right to the sides. Now if you have a bit of an overhang with your face frame, then you can either shim out these drawer slides or attach them from the back of the cabinet. The drawer slides that I bought did come with the rear mounting brackets, so that was an option as well, but since my cabinets were essentially frameless, I just mounted them to the side of the cabinets, making sure to set them back about an eighth of an inch from the front. All right, I got all of the drawer slides finally installed. That was quite the job, but thankfully I'm done and all that's left is to go ahead and get those drawer boxes made up. All right, so I got the pieces cut for one of my drawers. I went ahead and just uh, cut up a few pieces. I wanna make sure that my drawer size is gonna work. Um, and then once I get all of uh, the settings of everything sort of locked in, then I'll go ahead and bash out the rest of the drawers. But there's a few things to note when it comes to making drawer boxes for uh, these undermount drawer slides. And now every drawer slide that you get will have a little bit different instructions. Um, these are not the bloom uh, undermount drawer slides like a lot of people use, so my instructions are a little bit different with these. But basically whatever instructions come with the drawer slides themselves will tell you exactly the settings that you're going to need to cut um, these pieces to for your drawer boxes. So. As far as the side pieces go, they're super easy. Uh, whatever size drawer slide you bought, whether it be 15 inches, 18 inches, 21 inches, whatever to accommodate the size cabinet that you have, um, you're gonna cut your side panel pieces to exactly that dimension. So in my particular case, I bought uh, 18 inch drawer slide, so I cut my side panel pieces to 18 inches. So that one is super easy to figure out. So um, for your front and back uh, panel pieces, they're a little bit more complicated to figure out, but uh, like I said, with these instructions, they'll tell you exactly what you need to cut to. So in my particular example, uh, with my drawer slides, it tells me that I want to take my opening width and subtract 42 millimeters from that. So um, most of the time it's going to give you millimeters on these uh, instructions, but it also in this case does give you um, 1 in 21 30 seconds of an inch is the equivalent of 42 millimeters. So in my particular example, I have an opening on my top uh, two drawers that's uh, 14 and actually, sorry, the opening on all of my drawers, the opening width is the same and that's 14 and 1 16th inch. So I would either take 14 and 1 16th inch and subtract 1 and 21 30 seconds from that or a little bit easier to do is I just took 14 and 1 16th inches converted it to millimeters which is around 315 millimeters and then I subtracted the 42 millimeters from that and that's going to give me the dimensions that I'm going to need to cut my front and back panels to. Now, there's a couple other things that you need to pay attention to when it comes to building your drawer boxes. Uh, you're going to need to route out some sort of a groove that a panel can sit inside of that can be the bottom of your drawer. And uh, you have to take into account that 
This is going to, your groove, uh, according to the instructions, is going to need to be about a half an inch up from the bottom where that groove starts. So you want to make sure that you measure up a half an inch and that's where your groove for your bottom panel is going to start. And then once you get that um, dialed in, you can just route out you know, your groove on all of your pieces. So, okay, and there's one last thing that you sort of have to do for your back piece. So on your back piece, you're gonna um, have to notch out a section on the back where the drawer slides can actually run through and it's gonna sit down on top of that. I'll show you exactly how to do that in just a minute. You're also gonna have to drill two holes on the back that's gonna allow the drawer slides to lock in and sit um, inside the drawer and that's something that I'll show you in just a minute when I go ahead and get this box assembled. Okay so my next step is I'm going to go ahead and notch out the areas that I need to notch out for my back piece. To notch out these sections I made some marks according to my instructions and then I took them over to my bandsaw and cut these areas out off camera. With all the pieces cut from our drawer boxes, it was time to start getting them assembled. To do this, I started by placing my sheet of quarter inch plywood in my routed out grooves, and then I worked my way around adding pieces and attaching them together using wood and brad nails. Now the instructions for these drawer slides actually recommended to use half inch material for construction, which was not my preferred choice. Now I typically like to make nice and hefty drawers using some 3 quarter inch material so when I first looked at the instructions and saw it wanted me to use half inch material I thought to myself I'm not listening to you you're crazy but I figured why not let's follow the instructions and give this half inch stuff a try. Now once my boxes were fully assembled there were a few extra steps that you have to take before install. Now I didn't film any of these steps whoops but let me tell you about them. The first being attaching some clips that came with the drawer slides to the front underside of the drawer box. These will lock the drawer onto the slides and give you the ability to make some minor adjustments. And the final step is placing the box on the slides and seeing where those pins on the back of the drawer slide line up on your box and you will have to drill a hole for those to sit in. With most of the legwork done for the drawers, I decided it was time to get the bathroom vanity in place. Once I had it in position, I placed a few shims under it to make sure it was completely level. From there, I would work on getting it painted and finish making the drawer fronts. Now, I didn't film making these drawer fronts, but if you want to know how I did it, then I have another video over on my channel all about how I make shaker style cabinet doors. And it's pretty much the same exact process, just on a smaller scale. So go check out that video if you're interested. With the vanity getting close to completion, it was time to switch gears to working on the vanity top. For the top of the bathroom vanity, my plan was to glue up some oak boards that a vessel sink could sit on top of. So I cut my oak boards to size and then I made some slots for biscuits and worked on getting it glued and clamped together. After the glue had dried for my vanity top, I had something that was starting to look really beautiful. And then I went and put a bunch of holes in it. <laughs> Listen, I know what you're thinking. You're not very bright, are you? <laughs> but see, I can explain. These holes were the holes for the faucet and the sink drain in case you somehow forgot this far into the video that I'm making a bathroom vanity. So I got these holes cut to the exact sizes that I needed and then I worked on finishing the vanity top itself. The process went a little something like this, sanding, staining, finishing, all the usual steps. The stain that I used for the top was called Golden Oak by Minwax. I wanted a color that was going to be light enough to add some contrast to the navy blue color the vanity would be painted. Now as far as the finish for this top goes, I went back and forth on what to use. At one point I was settled on using some countertop epoxy, but I just didn't want that super glossy finished look. So I decided to use my tried and true general finishes oil based top coat 
and I made sure to apply more than the recommended amount of coats to make sure it stands up to the exposure to water. And even though it won't be seen, I made sure to give the underside of the vanity top a couple coats of finish as well to protect against any moisture. Now, because I added a two inch piece to the front of my vanity to give it the illusion of looking two inches thick, I needed to add a few pieces to the vanity for the top to sit on to get that look that I was going for. I just attached these pieces to the vanity with some wood glue and screws. To get the vanity top attached to the vanity base, I attached some figure eight fastener clips to my base and then screwed some screws through those figure eight clips into the top. This will allow the wood top to move seasonally and will hopefully prevent any sort of cracking. Once the top was attached, I then worked on getting the faucet and sink attached. To attach the sink to the vanity top, I applied some silicone adhesive to the bottom of the sink and set it in place and then installed the sink drain. Well there you have it guys. That was everything that I did to create this bathroom vanity and wooden vanity top. Now I'm really happy with the way this thing turned out. It is definitely much more functional than its previous version. And by the way, this was part of a full remodel that I did for my parents' half bathroom, which I previously did a video for. If you want to see the whole transformation video, head over to my channel and give that video a watch. It's a pretty crazy transformation in my opinion. I hope some of you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give this video a nice little thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for future content like this. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you for my next project. Bye.